Hey everyone, it's time for another live stream. I am sitting here today a little bit exhausted because I ran a half marathon yesterday and but hopefully my brain will be clear enough to cover this very extensive topic on cover stitching. And it's so fun to see some people in the chat already. Please say hi and also I'm really curious if you are joining the chat to know what your um, cover stitch relationship is. Do you own a cover stitch machine? Are you planning to buy a cover stitch machine? Or perhaps you want to get rid of your cover stitch machine? So please tell me in the chat uh, if you what kind of cover stitch status you have in your life, so to speak. I'm really curious because obviously I'm sure some of you who are watching are perhaps not owners yet, but also are considering getting cover stitch machine and those of you who have one I would also love to hear your experience with different brands because obviously there are a lot of different brands to choose from when it comes to cover stitch machine and uh, so it's good to hear all your different experience because I have a fairly limited experience with cover stitch machine I'm on my second one now which is a uh, Janome cover pro 2000 before that I had a combo machine from Fuff and also here in the back, I have actually borrowed a brother cover stitch machine I'm going to talk a bit more about later because that's one is a really exciting new development on the cover stitch market. Unfortunately, I don't own this one, but it's uh, some it's a book. Uh, it's a machine that I've borrowed from uh, a sewing friend and I'm using that for research for my book because I'm actually writing a book about cover stitching uh, as I think that this is a topic that is really in need of a lot more extensive information. So I'm currently in re research mode for that book and it will probably out in 2019 because I have a day, day job as well and a lot of other things on my plate. So book writing is a slow process, but I'm definitely working on it slow but steadily. So I will do a separate video about that later on. But tonight's topic is quite diverse. I'm going to go through some of the basics in the beginning here and talk about uh, the different kind of cover stitch machine because not all, all cover stitch machines are done the same way and if you already have a cover stitch machine you might want to get one of those instead so there are a lot of pros and cons and I would try to, to cover them as extensively as uh, I can because sometimes even myself I'm like oh, shouldn't I should I've gotten one of those versions instead so it's always good to to know what's out there and, and also to be aware of the differences if you're considering buying a cover stitch machine because as I said they're not all done the same. They actually have some unique features that uh, I think should you weigh in when you are um, considering purchasing a cover stitch machine. So I'm going to start with that. And then I'm going to talk about my research in a factory where I was able to meet um, a couple of uh, machine operators that uh, have worked in the garment industry for decades and they share their experience with cover stitch machine and also showed me how it looks in a factory setting and that I find that so fascinating. I was almost starstruck meeting this fantastic knowledgeable woman. I took a lot of photos uh, I will use part of that in my book as well but I figured I want to talk more more about that as well because I'm, I'm sure some of you are curious on on the differences between having say an industrial cover stitch version a domestic cover stitch machine and the pros and cons about that plus it's always nice to look inside a fa fashion fa factory I think um, and um, we have some uh, feedback here tonight I'm gonna say hey to everyone in the chat hi Greg uh, Chris says greetings and Kathleen says I have a baby lock that is probably the highest end machines from Babylock, both when it comes to price and I think quality. Most people seem to be happy about those one. And um, Greg says, I own a low level one, but I'm scared of it. <laughs> you know, I would love to hear more about that. Uh, I know some are and I've been one of those myself. And Lara says, I'm very excited about your book. It's very needed. Thank you so much, Lara. And uh, Crystal Sue and stuff says, I have a Genome 900 CPX. I'm still trying to figure out you can't adjust the needle width. Yeah, that is an issue you have to consider. And I'm going to talk a bit more about that. And Kathleen Meadows has um, good suggestions also if you want to know more about Cover Stitch Machine. Uh, Gail Jellen, she has a YouTube channel as well if you want to know more. And Chris is considering it. It says that kind of machine will be my fifth one on number three at the moment yes we, as we all know we we never seem to get enough of those machines first we start up thinking we can 
just uh, get along with the regular sewing machine and we can but then we get that sort of uh, sewing machine longing and sewing machine envy and that can be a very expensive trajectory <laughs> um hello howard and uh, hello stefan hello from washington hi no cover stitch experience here to learn and uh, jennifer is also had non cover stitch uh, experience whatsoever. So really lots of, that's great because there are obviously a lot of people who are actually on the fence of buying cover stitch machine. And hopefully this chat will make your decisions a bit easier if you want to have one or not. And Sherry says she's also watching the state. Uh, lots of uh, watching the state people here tonight. She says, I have never heard of a cover stitch machine until I start following you. I thought it was a five stitch shirt and you remove the cutters. Yeah. Because I'm going to talk about there is a version, uh, the combo machine, which actually combines these two things. So now let's go on with topic number one. I'm just going to give you an overview of the different type of cover stitch machine that are available on the market. And now I'm going to put on the slides, you know, all the drill. Um, let me see if I can get the right one. Yes. This uh, type is, I think, the most common one, and this is standalone cover stitch machine. And what it does is it sews two, th two needle and sometimes three needle cover stitch, and also it can do single needle or chain stitch. So these are the basic cover stitch machines. So if you are uh, looking for like a cover stitch machine that has very little uh, need for adjustment and you just want a straightforward cover stitch machine, that is easy to understand. You don't have to do any complicated setup. This is probably the cover stitch machine you you will be considering. Uh, I have a Yanomi Cover Pro 2000 CPX. Um, Yuki is another popular brand. Babylock. Uh, I think there are quite a few others that does this standalone. Brother also does standalone cover stitch machine. And if you're considering one of those, one thing you do need to think about is whether or not you should get um, two needle or a three needle cover stitch machine because i think in in when i bought my first cover stitch machine in the beginning of the 2000 there were only available two needle cover stitch machine and those are still available today but uh there are two advantages in investing in a three needle cover stitch machine uh, I, the biggest reason for that is first of all when you have three needles that means you can actually adjust the needle position better right because if you do um, the narrow uh, cover stitch by moving, uh, you can all, you can pick if you want to do the narrow on the left side or the right side. And another great thing about the three needle is that you can also achieve um, a pretty um, nice decorative stitch. So, so if you're curious about the three thread version, this is how it looks. So it has uh, three needles on the front and sometimes that might be a look that you're after, but the biggest advantage is actually when you see on the reverse side, because that creates a very nice decorative stitch. So it's actually quite popular. I know here in Sweden, because a lot of people sew with knits here, they like to actually use the reverse side of the three needle cover stitch because it provides such nice decorative stitching. and so basically what you can do with the three needle one is that you can do three needle, one needle, two needle left or two needle right. And also the wide one, which that, that you can't adjust the, the position, but it does gives you a lot more options. So I, if I would do a recommendation, <laughs> if I would dare to do a recommendation, I would definitely say considering getting a three needle cover stitch rather than um, a two needle cover stitch. if I don't know if it's the price difference is that big. I, I don't know because when I bought my Yanoma Cover Pro, the only that was the only version available here in Sweden which has three needles. So I didn't really have a choice, but I also was very eager to get one because I wanted to use the decorative stitch on the the, the reverse side. So I don't know how common it is in um, in the the other countries the the different versions there and. Uh, Jennifer has a question here. Can you sew knits and athletic wear with this the first option? Absolutely, absolutely. The the regular cover stitch machine I'm talking about now, you can do hemming, decorative stitches. It works really well because it's also quite straightforward. It isn't um it's very easy to to adjust and apply for different kind of materials. So you can actually do 
mimic uh, professional athletic gear really, really well, especially when you look at the three thread needle. And uh, as Katie also says, I I love that three needle decorative using wool nylon in the lap seam. And that is also a great thing because in the looper, the, the reverse side, you can actually decorate these threads. So um, in the photo I just uh, showed you here, uh, the red backside, that is actually not regular thread, but woolly nylon, which is a flossy thread that you can see in a lot of active wear and a lot of underwear. So it's definitely worth considering using that in the looper as well for that special look. So to answer your question, absolutely, Jennifer, you can use that machine. That's what I have myself and I it, it, has, <laughs> it has served me well, even though I am definitely sometimes considering the other two options that I will talk about now. And the second option when it comes to cover stitch machines is, uh, let me see if I can put this up. Oh. And the second option, which some of you I, I would assume would be primarily considering is a combination machine. This is a serger and a cover stitch machine in one. And this is how I started out. I started out with a fuff, uh, but it wasn't this one it was called cover style. And um, when I when I began, um, you know, longing for a cover stitch machine, the only ones available in Sweden was combination machine. And what combination machines means is that it's a combination of a serger and a cover lock machine. And there are lots of different price ranges for those and the ones the most expensive are the baby lock ones i think it's called ovation and it's like it it literally costs like um a decent used car <laughs> at least in sweden uh apparently the people who who i've spoke to owns it that's an amazing machine and actually have eight spools and that minimizes one of the problems with the the combination machine is that you have to um re-thread and reset the machine in order to switch between a serger and a cover stitch machine. And that actually kind of drove me nuts when I had my combination machine. I have it over 10 years, but I never really got used to spending, in my case, about five minutes uh, switching back and forth. And you're sewing with it, you probably do one step uh, with the serger, and then you need to hem before you can do another thing with the serger. So we could go back and forth, back and forth like this. And so for me, not having to go through that step has been a great, uh, it just made cover stitching much more enjoyable. That said, that was all machine. And I would like to assume that today the combination machine are better. And as I said, at least the baby locovation, you don't really need to do that switching back and forth in the same way because it has like eight spools, as I said. So there are definitely things to consider. And um, let me see here. I have some questions in the chat now. Sherry asks, are they easy to thread? Yes, cover stitch machines are relatively easy to thread, but it's super important that you thread them exactly as they say in the instructions. And I will talk a little bit more about that in the troubleshooting section, because one of the main reasons why you have a problem with your cover stitch machine is because something has gone wrong with the threading. So I wouldn't say it's difficult to thread it, but you have to be very, very careful when you're threading in order to avoid problems. And uh, the more people now from Europe, absolutely fabulous, says hello from England. And Christina says hello from Croatia. And Kathleen has um, some thoughts about the combination as well. She says, I don't recommend that combination or that re-threading. I started with the Who's Corner combo and hated threading that darn thing so much. I never ended up using the combo stitch machine. Sounds very similar to my experience. Uh, it was definitely a pain that I never gotten over. So it was a great experience, a great feeling to uh, get rid of that one. Uh, if I had, I think for me, it was also financial because there's a lot of investment. So I stuck it out with that uh, quite bad cover stitch machine for a long time because I wasn't able to afford to upgrade. So that's something we do need to consider. But now I have a standalone surgeon, a standalone cover stitch machine, and I do prefer that, even though sometimes I am tempted by the baby lock ovation uh, as known as the used car <laughs> priced uh, cover stitch machine. And uh, Gail says uh, she has a Yanoma 900 CPX. I think that's a two thread needle one, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, because the, the Yanoma 1000 and 2000 have three needles and the 900 has two needles. I think so. Correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. Uh, and she says, I work for an apparel manufacturer, make cycling apparel, 
accounting though, not sewing, but I'm sure you can uh, learn a few things there, I would assume, from your colleagues. And Gail says, yes, the 900 has two needles. So that's the difference if you're considering genoma, if you, you're confused about the different numbers. So 900, two needles, 1,000 and 2,000, three needles. And uh, Chris says, there's actually one even more expensive than the baby lock. Wow. <laughs> It's called Gloria. Who knew? Well, you can obviously spend, the sky is the limit when it comes to spending money on our sewing machines. So that's interesting to hear. And a fellow Swede here again, uh, Saske Hamsu. I'm sorry I pronounced that wrong. Hello from Stockholm, Sweden. Well, nice to hear from some Swedes. We have some Swedes in the chat. That's wonderful. And uh, Poppy is in the chat. Um, says, uh, hello from Margate, and this is really interesting as I'm thinking of getting cobble stitches. Well, I hope you, you are the right place now because that's what we're going to talk about. And now we have covered the two, I would say the two most common versions, the regular standalone cover stitch machine and the combination machine. And I think the general consensus of all the people I've talked about is that if you want to get a combination, the basically only one is worth considering is the baby lock ovation and I think there is actually coming out with a new model which probably is even more expensive so you probably have to like take a loan <laughs> in order to to get that one um and but we have a third machine and that is the one I am having right here behind me and this is super exciting development this is something that is called um a top cover stitch I think I should get the name right here brother has actually started producing a domestic cover stitch machine it's called cv uh, 3550 and what is a top cover stitch well it actually provides beautiful cover stitching on both sides because uh, if you look at the hemming of a lot of athletic wear for instance you will see that it actually has um, a chain uh, basically intricate chain stitch on both sides and this fantastic machine is actually able to do the same things on uh, similar seams on both sides plus it can all do what a regular cover stitch machine can do as well as the one i said in the first example and i'm going to show you now what that particular stitch looked like if you haven't seen it you, you will probably recognize it once i i show it to you okay this is how it looks like so the uh on one side it just looked like the regular three needle cover stitch but then you see on the other side do you recognize that stitch well if you look at pretty much any industrial ready to wear knit garments and especially active wear that is the kind of stitch uh, that is used so what this is i think it's the first brand for the domestic market that can actually do this so i will assume this will be a bestseller I tried it uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, in the store where my friend that my friend runs and it was a little bit fiddly to thread to be honest and but then I started stitching and I loved it and now uh, I just need to find the time to fully like engage <laughs> with this machine so I can give you a proper uh, review of it but I loved working with it and I definitely think that this is, will be the standard for, from uh, now on, basically, when it comes to cover stitch machine. Because if you have that one, you know, you will be very, very close to what the industrial machines can do, which is pretty amazing. And, um, and also another thing I forgot to say about the combination machine, which is actually a selling point. It could be. Uh, there's one stitch that the combination machine can do that not, not the regular cover stitch machine or this one as well, I think, can do. And that is what is called the safety stitch, which is basically how garments are made in the garment industry, uh, which basically sew, sew together and overcast in one um, movement. And I'm going to show you how that seems looks as so you can get a, a picture of it. Um, So if you say, um, if you look at your jeans or pants or blouses inside of them, they are most likely made using that stitch. And that is only available on 
the combination machines because they have five spools. And then, uh, but to be honest, <laughs> when to be, when I uh, had my my old Faf surgery cover stitch combo, uh, as I, I have had it for over ten years and I used that stitch about twice. The main reason was that it was amazingly <laughs> cumbersome to set the machine up for that stitch. So I just figured it would be it was much easier for me to just uh, sew a regular straight stitch on my sewing machine and then use um, the, the serger to overcast the seam. But that's definitely one of the things to consider. And also another seam that that serger had that uh, is not available on other cover stitch machine is the um, the a super stretch seam. It's actually a really nice overlock seam that is actually perfect for active wear because it has two needles but only one looper thread so it's less bulky than the regular four thread cover lock and that is only available on that kind of uh, combination machines and also I would assume surgery that has uh, five thread but again it, it was a little bit cumbersome to set up but that's also probably available I would assume on most combination uh, cover stitch machines so you know there are obviously pros and cons I'm, I'm not here to say which is the best one but uh, based from my own experience and uh, as Kathleen says in the chat and other people I've talked to they had pretty much uh, universally semi bad experience with the lower end of the combo machine so I don't feel confident in recommending and also one of uh, the experts I've talked about she says you know there is a trade-off and uh, a lot of those combination machines they are actually mediocre both as cover stitching and surging <laughs> so they don't really excel in, in any area whereas if you have a machine that is actually designed to do one thing they will use to perform better and, and i can definitely see that 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 seems like a valuable um, point and um Angela has a great question here um why should i sew with the cover stitch machine and not with a twin needle and overlocker well a twin needle is absolutely um, a good starting point if you just have a regular sewing machine. Uh, but there are obviously a lot more control when you're using a cover stitch machine. For instance, uh, you have the dif differential feed, which means that you, if you have problems with fabric stretching out or perhaps getting a bit too tight, you just adjust the differential feed so you can always get a very smooth hem. And sometimes uh, when you're hemming knits also with a twin needle, you will get uh, tunneling, um, especially if you haven't adjusted the, um, the tension in the bobbin, you know, that so it basically pr gets a little bit of a ridge in between. And thirdly, the, uh, the cover stitch has even more stretchability in general. So there's really no limit except for the fabric. Obviously, because the, the chain stitch on the back side gives it such amazing stretchability, which is one of the reasons why it's so attractive to get a cover stitch machine. And, and also what we covered, um, and ended up a bit late here, as she said, is of course all the decorative purposes that you will get with a cover stitch machine, because you can obviously do a lot of different um, stitching using the reverse side as well and using decorative thread, wool and nylon. So, and also, if you care about those things, <laughs> the cover stitch will also give you a way more professional finish than uh, a twin needle. I mean, it just looks more professional. I'm not saying the twin needle isn't good enough because it's definitely a fantastic way to hem uh, stretch and knits. But if you want to take your stuff to the next level, I definitely recommend uh, considering getting a cover stitch machine. And I would love in the chat if you chimed in as well. If, what, what do you think um, using a regular twin needle on a sewing machine versus... Um, a cover stitch. I sometimes use a twin needle as well on sewing machines. It all depends on the project and, and what mood I am in and such. And and they'll also ask a cover stitch, does it work on any fabric? 100%. Uh, it works on uh, woven fabrics. It's great for denim and I will talk a bit more about that in a bit. And it works on every knit fabric, I would think. I mean, obviously, I, I probably wouldn't work on too heavy fabrics like burlap and stuff because I don't think it's um, as powerful as a good sturdy regular sewing machine so I will take that back also um, it's generally only recommend that you go up to size 90 needles so I would think that uh, if you want to go up to 100 and stuff like that that is probably not uh, the, the cover stitch machine isn't set up for that so I take that back 
not for every fabric because uh, but for most fabrics and uh, now I want to show you a bit from my visit to the garment uh, factory a little bit of background uh, we don't actually in Sweden have any uh, fully working um, garment factories because in the 80s um, basically we had a big industry in Sweden for garment making it was uh, really uh, well developed and uh, but then of course due to um, pay rises and and competition from countries with lower salaries uh, in the 80s um, the manufacturing moved to other countries which I think is pretty common in uh, that's what we see in the, in the world it's moving around depending on where the salaries are the lowest unfortunately that's how it works but um, there is in uh, in the center basically of the old Swedish garment industry there is a big university and they have a fully functional factory where students learn garment manufacturing all those things really fascinating and they have a massive plant with every kind of sewing machine imaginable and I think they had seven cover stitch machine uh, just in that uh, school factory uh, a lot of older ones so it's really fascinating and I'm going to talk a bit about that now so you can see how it works in the in the garment industry so here I am visiting it I am trying one of those industrial cover stitch machine and uh, the woman to the right is one of the machine operators she has worked in the industry for over 30 years and uh, now since obviously the employment for uh, manufacturing is so scarce she's now switched to become a teacher and she loves this and she was absolutely wonderful to to talk about because she had so much knowledge and here you can see here is one of those cover stitch machines this is the one that they say they love the most and uh, i tried it and the stitching was beautiful <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic uh, and also you didn't have to um so they can be a little bit uh, meddled to attach the um, the uh, the threads when you're, you're doing a cover stitch because it doesn't um, you have to be careful so it doesn't unravel. But that industrial cover stitch machine, you just push the paddle backwards and all the threads were secured. No manual uh, attachment. I I don't know if there are any domestic cover stitch machine that has this function, but I thought it was a wonderful thing uh, to have. So. <laughs> Uh, and obviously the sitting was beautiful but one thing also to consider if you you consider getting a, a industrial cover stitch machine is first of all uh, there are no numbers so <laughs> if uh, you you need to experiment and uh, so basically on the, you see on the dials I mean normally on, on our regular sewing machine there will be a one two three four five tension stitch length and all that stuff but on industrial machines it's uh, apparently not any number so they um, they basically experiment and have the mechanic trying out uh, different settings until they find the right one and they they don't touch it so what was really fascinating about cover stitching in the industrial setting and also I think explains why some of us struggle when we try to do different things is because the uh, the industrial cover stitch machines only are basically set up to do one thing. So there is like one, this one here in the photo I'm going to show you here. This one is set up to only sew belt loops. That's all what it does. And it has like a belt loops attachment. And so it's optimized for that particular purpose. And it doesn't really do anything else. Um, I'm going to see if I have some more examples. Yep, and this one is done for just doing a uh, two needle binding attachment, you know, basically uh, doing what I have here. This is actually done on my Yanome cover stitch machine, the binding here, using the binder attachment. And uh, that is obviously has been a bit big learning experience for me. So it's really interesting to see that uh, in the industrial setting, they just uh, tweak and tweak and tweak until everything is absolutely perfect for just sewing binding and that's all it does. So that's really interesting because that also gives me some understanding of why it can be difficult sometimes to get the cover stitch machine to do all the things I want to do because I'm not knowledgeable enough and patient enough to experiment so much and also have a mechanic on hand as they have in the the the, um, the garment industry. So 
I, I really, really enjoyed seeing that in perspective. And uh, Wilson from Germany, hello. Hello, Nelly from Cologne, Germany. And so that was really, really interesting. And um, another thing that they said, <laughs> because uh, I, I interviewed two, two ladies and they were both like, oh, cool vestige machine, they are the worst. <laughs> and they have worked in the garment street for, for many decades, both. And they were like, there's no other type of machine that uh, causes so much trouble and we have to call on the mechanic so often. And, you know, you, you they always feel like, and I, actually, when we, um, when they're going to show me one of the binding composite machines, they're going to demonstrate that for me. Uh, one of the students uh, had been uh, re-threading it and obviously done some kind of mistake. So when uh, the machine operator were about to demonstrate it for me, we ended up with actually skip stitches, <laughs> just like we often do on a domestic sewing machine. So they said it's, it's definitely, and then they have to start all over, check everything, making sure uh, the, the threading is on point and it's apparently even more difficult on an on a industrial sewing machine. And also another thing, because sometimes I, I can see, um, you know, if you're thinking about getting an industrial cover stitch machine rather than a domestic cover stitch machine, uh, the uh, the thought that I was given from one of the operators, she said that she had actually considered getting one of those cover stitch machine, uh, the one that has the the automatic securing with the pedal. And she said that um, she had talked to the mechanic and uh, asked him for advice. Should I get one of those industrials? And he was like, don't do it <laughs> because it will be too cumbersome and you won't have me on hand. And I would actually recommend that you rather get a domestic cover stitch machine rather than using uh, getting an industrial cover stitch machine at home. So I was like, that's interesting because sometimes, because I can sometimes feel myself a bit frustrated with the, um, the domestic cover stitch machine. And uh, sometimes I don't feel they're powerful enough, especially sewing over bulky layers. But apparently, uh, industrial sewing machine has their own quirks. And uh, as I said, uh, it's very hard, you know, the setting doesn't have any numbers. It just felt a bit overwhelming, even though obviously they were optimized now for for doing what they did. So they worked really well when I tried them. But uh, that was definitely interesting to understand that, you know, getting an industrial, that's a, a whole different area that you need to be prepared for, basically. So there are a lot of things to consider. Now, I want to talk a bit about what can you do with a cover stitch machine. Uh, I've got several questions about that in the chat. And obviously, we can do it for hemming because that is obviously what I think most people uh, are buying the cover stitch machine primarily for, I would assume. Uh, as we talked about before, it's basically um, a step up from the sewing machine twin needle. But there are obviously a lot of other uses as well that I'm going to show you some here that perhaps also can be helpful if you are considering uh, if it's worth getting a cover stitch machine. Let's see if I can pick it up like this. Well, so here is a picture. And um, as I mentioned before, one of the advantages of using a cover stitch machine is you can also use it for decorative purposes. Uh, for instance, you can use the reverse side, especially if you have a three thread, a three needle cover stitch, but also obviously um, a two needle cover stitch. If you use the reverse side, you can actually use a lot of decorative stitching over ribbing. You can use it uh, in Sweden. It's quite popular to to attach uh, pockets and things like that with that visible seam round pocket. So you can do a lot of different things that is obviously not possible with a regular sewing machine. And um, Another thing that I talked about, which perhaps you wouldn't think is actually sewing belt loops, especially if you're into jeans making, all industrial um, covers or all industrial jeans are actually done using um, the cover stitch machine, all the old belt loops. And what's interesting about that, there are a lot of different ways to do that. Actually, I'm also I'm currently researching belt loops and cover stitch machine um, for my book. And you can basically do it in two, three, basically three different ways. You can um, use an attachment. Uh, if you remember one of the images that I showed you on uh, from the, the factory, there is an attachment that folds the uh, 
the fabric and then obviously you stitch with the two the wide two needle cover stitch and then you just cover the raw edges so there's no need to overcast it uh before and you can either do like a lap like you do one two three layers like this which is one method and there is a attachment for that and you can also uh, fold it so that the edges meet uh, in the middle exactly and do the same thing because obviously the as you see in the chain stitch is very great covering the the, um, the under part of the belt loop so it obviously provides a really really nice um, finish here so you can see there this one is obviously done with the fabric folded in the middle so different ways and of course you can also do that manually which is what i have done but now i actually ordered some generic attachment that you can pretty much because um, there aren't any dedicated um, belt loop folders for uh, domestic cover stitch machine but you can buy generic ones and attach them with with tape or blue tack or something like that so i'm really curious to try them out and see if i can get them working with my cover stitch machine and speaking of jeans and decorated thread a lot of stitching on jeans is actually done using the one needle cover stitch or the chain stitch so as you can see here on my old pair of lead jeans i'm not making these myself these are made in the structure setting the um the stitching on the uh, front pockets the decorated stitching actually done using a one needle cover stitch or chain stitch which is the correct term there so there are a lot of uh, opportunities if you want to venture into that and you can as i said use decorated threads in a cover stitch machine you will probably have to experiment a bit with the settings to get that right which is one of the drawbacks when it comes to cover stitch machine is that as a lot, if you start venturing doing just very simple knit hemming you will spend a lot of time experimenting with the tension stitch length and all that good stuff so that can be one of the i would say frustrations when it comes to cover stitch machine and um let me see here i, I have some questions in the chat now i'm gonna see if i can answer lucille asks, i get quite a bit of stretching how would i tame it with the cover stitch machine the differential feed is your friend it depends i can't give you an exact setting because it does depends both on the fabric and your particular uh, machine usually i there is a recommendation in the manual and a very very important thing which is also one of the things that you know you need to retrain your brain basically when cover stitching is that when you're sewing on a regular sew sewing machine you you know you like to handle the fabric and you pull it slightly backwards but you should don't touch the fabric don't pull it uh when you're cover stitching because that will re lead to two bad things first of all it can res result in skip stitches and secondly it can also cause the fabric to stretch out so those are definitely things that you sort of need to um, let go of if you if you want to get better result with cover stitching that could be a cause for you i don't know but uh, not pulling the fabric and also experimenting um with the differential feed and if you get uh stretched out fabrics you should raise the differential feed to a higher number because that will keep the fabric in check i love the differential feed it's one of my favorite things about the cover stitch machine and the serger as well because it gives it so much more control than a regular sewing machine and uh Kashnikau, hi from Czechia. Hi, it's great. Europe is very well represented tonight. Excellent. I'm still deciding between brother new one and you know Methuselah. If you did not speak about the difference, I rather just know, I would love to hear which is better. Well, I have owned the Yanoma for two years, so I'm very familiar with that one. Uh, the brother I have only tried for about 45 minutes, <laughs> which uh, and I don't own this one, so it's it's hard for me to give you a fair assumption. What I know from the people who I've spoken to is that it is, it has a learning curve. It is quite uh, testing when it comes to different settings which is also the case for the Yanoma, depending on what fabric you use. Uh, I would say like this, the learning curve is shorter with the Yanoma and the learning curve, for me, my initial reaction is higher with the brother. On the other hand, it's much more, how shall I say, 
it's not from versatile and i think to be honest if if i were buying a cover stitch machine today i would probably buy this one instead but again uh I, I don't I don't feel confident in in praising it because I'm I'm not really uh, an experienced user with it. But uh, still, considering that extra function, that would definitely be um, a good point. And in general, if you want to get uh, to speak to people who own pretty much any cover stitch machine, I highly recommend that you join the Facebook group. I think it's called Coverlock slash Cover Stitch or Cover Stitch slash Coverlock. It's run by a fabulous woman called Hill. They also have a great cover stitch site called coverstitching.com. And when I find the time, I will link down all this in the description section as well, because over there in the Facebook group, you will definitely can ask any type of questions. And I'm sure pretty much any so, uh, cover stitch machine is represented there by someone. So you probably get a lot more, a better uh, answer than I can give you. So I highly recommend that you check that group out also do know one thing that uh i think perhaps you get a little bit scared <laughs> reading that group because in sweden we have a saying um basically it's called health health stays silent which means that if everything is okay you don't really talk about it but as soon as things are not going according to plan and you're unhappy about it then of course you get uh way more verbal <laughs> loud so uh, sometimes I feel a little bit in that Facebook group, uh, it can get a little bit slanted towards negative experience because that is obviously why you you don't write a post telling you how much you love your cover stitch machine. You're more likely to, to talk about uh, the troubles you're having. So to bear that in mind, uh, and perhaps it's not the full picture, but you know, have these, that understanding of how how forums work basically. Uh, so that's also good to know, I think, because it can be a little bit easy to be scared of especially certain uh, cover stitch models. The Yanoma that I have, for instance, is one of those that's taking a lot of flack there. Not undeservedly, it's not a perfect machine by any means, but I can sometimes think that it gets a little bit too much flack uh, over there uh, because it's also, I mean, it can be a little bit tricky to use. So sometimes, you know, it's a training from the user perspective as well that it's required. So, you know, just keep bear that in mind. Um, yeah, what else? Yes, I'm going to show you some more ways now to to use the cover stitch machine if you're still on the fence or have a cover stitch machine and uh, I'm considering um, if it's worth the purchase. One of my favorite love-hate things about the cover stitch machine is attaching binding. And binding is obviously a fantastic way to achieve professional looking results on your me-made garments. And uh, many cover stitch machine has a standalone binder attachment. You can also buy generic binder attachment that um, can do the same thing. And in the case of my Yonome, I, I have the original binder attachment. It's super expensive, very unuser friendly. And I've tried generic uh, binder attachment uh, that cost one quarter of the price that were just as good. So, or perhaps even better, to be honest, uh, check eBay or Aliexpress and, and places like that. And other sellers who also sells that kind of generic, it's uh, definitely worth considering. And as this is obviously, as I said previously, this is done with the binder attachment. And once you're getting working, you know, you can't deny the uh, the quality and the look of that uh, I'm I'm still a little bit of a love hate thing but you know if you see this it's it's a fantastic um, way that you can use your cover stitch machine and you don't even actually have to use or own a binder attachment to do to to achieve all that um, I'm going to show you here. Because if you have my if you have my book, uh, Sewing Activewear, this one, I talk a fair bit about cover stitching in that as well. And I have uh, four different tutorials for bindings, which only one uh, is uh, using an attachment or the other three can be done on either a sewing machine or, or a cover stitch machine. And this one you see is using just a regular presser foot on the cover stitch machine and it's still produced fantastic result. Uh, and again, Thanks to the differential feed, 
it will be easy to keep the neckline for stretching out when you're doing binding attachment, uh, bind, binding details on your cover stitch machine compared to a regular sewing machine. But some people get it work fantastically well on a sewing machine as well. So I'm not definitely one to to say it's uh, it's not uh, good enough for sure. Uh, and another thing that you can use for the uh, you can use on the cover stitch. I'm gonna actually show you guys here a close up of my the sweater <laughs> that my daughter is, is wearing today. <laughs> she she is uh, used to having her mother taking photos <laughs> of her garments because I'm usually very inspired. She bought this a sweater in a vintage store, and uh, as you can see, the ribbing is uh, stitched down using a two needle cover stitch machine and you can also obviously um, this and, and the raglan seam uh, you can see that is probably done using the industrial version of the brother machine that I talked about uh, the, the top cover machine but you can also achieve a similar decoration uh, using the reverse side of the three thread so that's a great way and you can obviously also use contrasting thread which is I think a beautiful way to to use cover stitching and another thing is uh, to stitch down seams. Um, this is from a sports bra that I just recently made. Again, I talk more extensively about this in my book, Sewing Active, and I would definitely talk a lot about it in my book about cover stitching as well. But basically, you can use the cover stitch machines to stitch down seams to make them chafe free and non bulky, which is obviously fantastic for active wear. And on this, I used the um, the narrow two needle um, cover stitch, uh, but I can you can also use the reverse side. And it looks like this. See, yeah, can you see that? Um, and I used, I think I used, I don't remember if it's wool and iron looper, but this is again stitched over a seam. And you can see, this is a great way to actually mimic uh, ready to wear techniques using just your regular three, in this case, three needle cover stitch machine. So that's just to show you some of the many ways you can use a cover stitch machine. And if you have any more uses, I would love to know. And also you, when you're doing binding, you can also use the one needle chain stitch, which is very popular, especially uh, I saw one of you in chat talks about, you know, wanting to make more children clothes. And if you look uh, closely on them, a lot, especially on the binding, they have a quite a narrow binding and usually just have a one single row of chain stitches and actually in the fashion factory that I visited uh, they had a, one machine set up just for using one needle um, for the binding as well so that's also one of the many things you can do with the cover stitch machine so in if you ask me and I'm obviously biased because even though I, I sometimes get upset with my cover stitch machine I wouldn't want to be without it and it's been definitely worth all the money sometimes it feels a little bit oh should I spend so much money on a machine that basically can only do one thing well yeah <laughs> it's definitely worth considering uh, i hope if you're on the fence now uh, i would love to hear you in the chat chime in if you feel perhaps um, have a better understanding of what the cover stitch machine do and if you are basically considering it getting one now or if you rather you don't think it's worth i would love to hear your impressions now when i talked a bit more in depth about what the cover stitch machine can do if you if you see if that is something that could be of interest for you, I would love to get that kind of feedback because it's also good to know. I mean, obviously I've, I've had mine, I've had a cover stitch machine for 14 years now. So uh, it's almost hard now to remember when I didn't have one. And what made me get a cover stitch machine was that I was part of a sewing group back then. Uh, we, we sewed together once a week. And one of the uh, fellow sewers there had, um, a cover stitch surgery combo and she made the most fabulous looking nip tops and I was still doing you know the regular twin needle hemming with the sewing machine and when I saw her professional result versus mine I was like god I really really want one of those cover stitch machines as well so that's why I ended, I ended up buying the cheapest one uh, the, the combo that was available in in Sweden back then and it uh, it wasn't very good but I did use it for over 10 years so it did did something good at least so for me it has definitely been worth it even though it felt 
crazy to pay so much money for that machine way back and and obviously now they're even more expensive and Greg is a great question as well I wonder if any machines have a speed adjustment mine scares me because as soon as I touch the foot pedal it feels like it rough off me you know this is something I am not a specialist in but I will say that a lot of the pedals that I've gotten with my both my uh, Genome and the baby lock as well has not been good paddles because they don't they feel like they only have basically two two um, variations no speed or uh, high speed um, so I've actually seen people advising getting a better pedal so if you ever you guys have experienced uh, switching to a better quality pedal I would love to know because that's something that could definitely be approved upon I totally agree with you Greg and uh, another thing also, um, which I was uh, I learned recently when I interviewed an expert, which is uh, someone who's actually taught me uh, to use the cover stitch. In, she teaches in, in the store where I buy my machines and I interview her for my upcoming book. And she said what's really interesting, um, because obviously um, one of the problems is with the cover stitching is skip stitch, especially if you're uh sewing over uh, thicker layers that that's usually when things can go wrong and and one way to do that is adjusting the pressure foot pressure uh to accommodate for thicker layer but another thing that she said is that people don't s cover it fast enough they're a bit too hesitant so she was like put the pedal to the metal and just go full throttle so it's for instance if you um are hemming over um bulky seam allowance and you experience that the you get you have probably noticed that if you have a cover stitch machine is that it tends to skip a stitch just over where all the layers meet and obviously one tip is to um to flip the uh the seam allowance uh on opposite direction so you do a little bit of snippet where you fold it that's how i do it but she said you know people need to go faster and uh when i i just recently made this sports bra uh which uh, had me for uh, many different doing many different things but one thing was that i uh cover stitched over uh elastic seam allowance three layers of fabric four five five layers of fabric it was crazy there's so many there's so many layers of fabric inside this little casing you have no idea and uh, i was like um I felt so confident after interviewing her and I was like, I'm going to do this because that one, that's one that been one of my issues as well. And I just follow her advice, uh, everything she said, and I'm happy to report I didn't get one single skip stitches. And so that definitely goes to show how much technique is a uh, key when it comes to cover stitching. And I will cover all that kind of extensively in the book for sure, because I've gotten so many great ideas. and. And speed is one of those things that I did, wasn't aware of uh, before I interviewed her. So it's really fascinating to hear. And Margaret, uh, she has um, some points of view here as well. Uh, just to add, I used differential feed to cover stitch over searching and work the treat. Thank you for the tips. Yeah, the differential feed is top notch. And also Margaret says, my pillow too really annoys me. Yeah, you know, I was actually super disappointed because um, I had... How shall I put it? Higher expectations of the pedals because uh, I talked about that I owned a cheap cover stitch machine, Fuff, and that had a really flimsy pedal. And then I bought the Yanome, which is made in Japan, blah, 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 uh, and it wasn't cheap. And then I also invested in a Baby Lock Soldier, and they both had those the exact same cheapish plastic looking pedals that, that my budget uh faff machine had and i'm like if i pay so much money i do expect that the pedals to be better as well uh so there must be a way to improve that but i definitely think it's bad of the manufacturer because i i have um a vintage uh banana sewing machine and that pedal is wide and sturdy and it's super easy to regulate the speed but uh, the um, both the surgery and the cover stitch has a tiny plastic and it's just like electronic. You've probably seen those one. It looks like a, a toy from the 80s. It's, it's super weird, super weird. Um, also, um, 
Speaking of, if you're interested in getting a cover submachine, Sherry says, yes, I want one. I will also buy a new book. Thank you. Uh, binding has always been a challenge for me. Yeah, it does. It is. It is tricky. And as I said, it's also tricky with the cover stitch machine. But I, I noticed that with a lot of practice, the results improved immensely. So give it time and you will be very happy with the result. And absolutely fabulous as a tip also. I read that even new machines can need oiling as they can be sitting in the warehouse for a while. That can solve many issues apparently. That's also good to know. I'm definitely one of those people who don't really uh, serve my service my machines enough at home. I tend to wait a bit too long and then I take it to the mechanic, but I should definitely do more at home. So that's a great idea as well. Um, if you have any more questions in the chat, I would love to know. And uh, I also should also, speaking of troubleshooting, I will give you some more tips when it comes to that. Um, as I said, skip is, is a problem and uh, one of the things that has been recommended for me as well is to pick a longer stitch length in general that can help with everything from skip stitches to tunneling basically you know the, the having the the tunnel forming or the ridge forming between the stitches that can happen on the cover stitch machine as well it's not just on the um, the twin needle so that's something to be considering uh, for the genome actually um, my cover stitch teacher actually recommends it going up to the max length which is four i don't know how it's on others other cover stitch machines but it can definitely be worth examining and another tip is also if you um spend the time and uh get the settings right for a project with the tension and differential feed and stitch length pressure for pressure do write them down i i, I sometimes forget doing that i'm super upset because uh, that usually means I have to start all over again and, and that can definitely make the the process of switching between different materials much less cumbersome so I do recommend that and also I know at least for the genome and I'm sure for other composition machines people are pretty generous about uh, posting their ideal stitches for different materials uh, online and you will find a lot of tips on settings in the Facebook group that I talked about earlier the cover lock stitch group and also uh, at Hilda's uh, accompanying site, coverstitching.com. And Howard is uh, also someone we need to learn from. He says, I clean and oil my machines after every product. Good boy. Well, good boy indeed. <laughs> I should, I should uh, learn a bit from you. I definitely, uh, that's basically my life. I, I don't take care of my bikes either as well. As I, it's, just, it's just one of those white spots, but I definitely need to improve that and, and focus on, on doing that. For long liberty as well, it's, it's super important. Um, so if you have any more questions, please ask away in the chat. And another tip about cover stitching, let me see here. Um, yeah, basically what you also need to know is that needles are super important and there's no right needles for every machine because every every machine will be configured for a different type of system. Not, not that there are many different types of system, but simply put, there are two different uh, common needle systems for cover stitch machine it's either household needles which is basically the same type of sewing needles that you use in the sewing machine and that should be stated on the in the manual and on many cover stitch machine including the Yanome and the baby lock it's uh, the elx system which is fantastic because every time i don't use these needles i get skip stitches but if i use the elx system schmetz is a brand i can recommend i have much less problem with that and of course, the third option is to um, some machines are obviously the industrial, they use the industrial needles and they are a little bit different as well. And also, if you sew a lot of knits, I should definitely investigate if you can not get the universal, but the uh, with the mid ballpoint. This one is uh, Schmetz's. Uh, when I began cover stitching, there was just universal needle with tiny ballpoint, but now. Schmetz also done, does a serger um, cover stitch needle with a ballpoint. So using these actually has made the problem with skip stitches much less problematic for me. And it's all, it's available in night as well. So I can use it also when I stitch over a lot of bulky lays. But again, make sure that you use the needles that is recommended by the manufacturer. Uh, I've seen a lot of generic tips and I, I about that, So, but I, I, I don't feel confident in saying that even though I love this ELX system, it's not done for all machines because I, from my research, they are configured for that particular 
needle system so you need to make sure they use the right one uh let me see here a bit more questions here uh yeah i have a few more questions in the chat here uh what where would the oil for the covetous machine there are um particular um, uh points where, where which are marked for oil so th they, those can be different to different machines but usually like a, a drip um um marking so you know where to oil and you, uh, from my understanding that's the only place you should, you should oil don't go do anything else that's at least what i've been taught when i've taken classes uh eric has a great question uh regarding the genomic cover stitch um when i did a video a video review of my genomic cover stitch eric uh here in the chat made a comment about on the uh genome there's actually two holes in the thread tower uh i can see if i can pick that out now so you can see let me see how I don't know if it's visible, but the genome, as I said, it's a very common machine and it's probably not as clear on the image, but you can see there's actually two holes there. And in the manual, it says you should you only need to use one hole uh, unless you have problems with the um, thread uh, getting loose. Uh, then you can also thread it to the second hole in the, in the white piece there in the thread tower. But Eric, who has some experience with uh, industrial machines, said that he thinks that uh, actually threading both would improve the tension issue. I have not been able to test this yet, as I've been busy doing other things apart from sewing, but I will definitely test that and report back. So that can be something to consider. I, I'm sure it doesn't hurt. And as Eric says, they should they don't really should not have put that uh, extra hole for nothing i mean there must be a purpose with that so that can be worth examining if you have tension problem which is one of the problems with the the genome there and we have um miss excite says uh do you use any other attachments besides the binder attachment uh, as for attachment i only use that one uh, it depends on different models uh, as i mentioned i'm just uh, i've ordered some belt loop attachment that i'm really curious to try out so i will definitely report back on that also, I use other presser foot, presser fit, presser foot. <laughs> it's again my my lack of proper English sometimes gets gets in the way. Uh, I don't ever hardly ever use my regular metal presser foot uh, for my cover stitch machine anymore. I use the clear one because it has a foot made of plastic, so it's much more easy to sew straight. And I also use just a regular um, quilting guide and seam guide that's included to to make sure that I James straight but from the genome they have loads of different attachment to examine and if you're curious you can head over to my blog thelaststitch.com because actually this week i did um a review of all the, the attachment and fit that i have and also other accessories that are available for the genome so you can definitely check that out if you want to know more more about all the different attachment you can buy but it can get definitely get pricey because they're not cheap at least not from the genome so they're definitely worth considering but if your brand of cover stitch machine has a clear press foot, that would ever be my number one investment if you're considering getting more. And then, of course, uh, the binding attachment. But as I said, you can probably get away using a generic one instead. And uh, as Cosin says, what which thread are best for overlocking cover stitch machine? Well, you use regular. Let me see if I can pick it up so you can see it. Um, Da -da -da. <laughs> this is regular 30 thread it's 120 then it's just a tip is to buy good quality i like in sweden i like to get um, gutemann there is also coats i know maxilock is a brand that is popular if you have any favorites please tell me in the the uh, comment section and i also should show you here um this is what i talked about in the beginning of this live stream woolly nylon which is a flossy thread gives this beautiful coverage and this one is 160 denier so it's uh, and it basically flosses out and does beautiful coverage. so these are the ones that i use mostly but you can also use decorative thread heavier threads and you know just as, as long as you adjust the tension but 
flossy woolly nylon and regular serger thread are the ones that I think should be in your collection. But you, you, you start off with this one and when you feel confident, you put this one. I only use it in the looper. I know some use it in the needle as well. When I visit the garment factory, they only use this in the looper and use regular thread in the needle. So that's up to you. Uh, experience might vary for that. And uh, Lisa Wendel says, I find that adjusting the angle at which my foot uh, hits the pedal will be controlling the speed of my sewing machine. So I always put a book stand with adjustable angles underneath my pedal. That's a really interesting hack. I've never thought about that, but that is definitely a very good tip because I do, I can agree that. And also they don't really stay put well, uh, those flimsy pedals. So having a, a book for stability, that sounds like an excellent idea. Thank you so much, Lisa. And Angela says so she has a genome overlock and I love it. And I use household needles as recommended. As I said, some machines will recommend household needles and some will use uh, specialty surgery needles. So it all depends on your machine. Anyways, I think it's about time now. It's been over an hour and <laughs> course stitching is something I'm very passionate about. Um, if you want to know more about this, apart from the sites that I mentioned and the Facebook group, you can also head over to my blog, thelostitch.com and under categories there you find um, a category called cover stitching or cover stitch and there you have tons of tutorials and tips and tricks that I've done over the years and of course also if you're here at my YouTube channel I have a playlist about cover stitching it's probably about seven or eight videos at this point everything from troubleshooting to how to um, get started and a bias guide if you're considering different models and all that good stuff so if you're more curious I can highly recommend that you check out the all the information I've done over the years and of course Stay tuned for more information about my upcoming book. I will do a video about that when I have a bit more to, to show. I'm, I'm going to start working more extensively on it during the summer now. So hopefully I have a bit more to show now for the coming. Uh, and some little more people in the chat says, thanks, Johanna, get some rest. I will. <laughs> I need to. I'm definitely sure. Margaret says, thank you, Johanna. And your book is excellent and well worth reading many times. So thank you so much, Margaret. Uh, Stefan has another tips about the foot pedal. I attach my foot pedal to the cabinet so that I can control speed with the side of my knee. You have some really great tips. I need to definitely become more savvy when it comes to pedal controlling. And uh, Lucia says thank you and Angela says thank you for the chat. Have a nice evening. Yes, have a nice evening. Thank you so much for joining me. I love chatting with you and there will be another live stream in June. And I will, of course, uh, post about that and the topic when the time comes. Anyways, have a great day now and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.